Now, when it comes to an exam outside of what you're used to, of course, you're going to be stressed. You're going to wonder, how am I going to prepare? What is the best way I can go about making sure I pass in my first attempt? So what we're going to talk about today are your five tips to ensure you, you ace the UKMLA. If this is the first time you're checking out our channel, welcome. Basically what we do is we run a website that's totally free known as roadtouk.com and it will explain the ins and outs about everything related to the United Kingdom and what it takes for you to work as a doctor in the NHS. So if you've not already, please stalk us on all of our social media. Find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. Hey guys, it Breeze here. Now, you might be stressing out. I'm talking about the UK MLA. What happened to Plab? Well, if you're taking basically Plab 1 from August 2024 onwards, guess what? It's no longer following the Plab blueprint. Instead, it's following the MLA content map. And while the name hasn't updated just yet, that's what you need to start thinking about and preparing for from here on forward. It's not going to be exactly what you expected before, because as GMC has clearly stated in many places, they're updating a lot of things. They're looking to make, you know, UK graduates also take this exam from 2025. So you need to make sure you do the very best you can so that you don't waste time, you don't spend a lot of money, and of course you don't stress unnecessarily. So we're going to talk about five tips to help you pass in one go. Now, the first tip, the first tip is with your question bank, at least, at least do two to three revisions. And I'm talking about complete revisions where you're looking at the explanations, you're understanding them, you're looking at why is the correct answer the correct answer? Why are these incorrect answers incorrect? Fully absorb and understand. It may be the first time when you go through it, you won't look at it that deeply and that's okay. But the second and third time, really start absorbing that content because that's your extra revision. And of course, you're reinforcing your concepts. The second thing you should be doing, invariably, you're gonna get some questions wrong. And that's okay, that's part of the learning process. So whatever you get wrong, any other questions, maybe you felt they were a little difficult, but you still got them right, or anything that you feel like you need to revise again, flag those questions. So you've got your flagged questions and you've got your incorrect questions. And you should be doing a separate revision of just those questions. I would recommend at least two revisions of just those. So I'm not talking about the full revision that we talked about in the first tip, no. That is one type of revision that you should be doing generally. Everything should be revised, but you should put aside time for a separate revision of anything you found difficult, anything that you flagged, and anything that you got incorrect. The third tip, don't get caught up in thinking, all right, cardiology, gastro, those are big systems. So most of the questions are going to come from there. That means I should really only study those. And why worry about epidemiology? Maybe only one or two questions will come from that. I really don't need to prepare for that. No. Never has GMC come out and said either, you know, FAB or how the MLA is going to be structured. Will there be any sort of specific percentage of questions from certain subjects? And, you know, more from one, less for another. Do not try and approach your prep thinking, well, these are bigger subjects, these are bigger you know, chapters, I should look at those more and not consider the smaller chapters. Remember, the way that the exam is scored, it's down to you getting the correct answers correct and how they look at that curve really depends on how everyone else does as well. So if you're in a situation where you didn't study a certain section and other people did and they got those correct and you did not, you're missing out on an opportunity to pass. That's why it's really important you structure out your time and figure out how you'll prepare. Don't say, I'm only going to do these sections because I only have, you know, a month and a half to prepare. You need to plan it out in the sense of how many questions you're going to complete in the time that you put forth. So if you think I have six weeks and I want to go through at least a hundred questions a day, see if that's viable, see if that's feasible and plan accordingly. Do not get to a point where it's two or three days before the exam and you're rushing and trying to just revise futilely because it's not going to do you any benefit. And if anything, It'll stress you out more for the exam. And then come exam day, you might just feel so overwhelmed that even if you do know the answers, you're not going to be able to concentrate. P.S. If you've gotten to this part of the video, you stuck around. I've got something hopefully nice for you. If you can guess where our shooting location is today, if you're able to, you don't necessarily have to name the peak, but if you generally have an idea of the location and you're the first one to comment, comment down below, 
you will receive a free personalized guiding session either with myself or with Dr. Ibrahim. So start guessing. All right, let's see what you guys think. And then of course we will tell you what the correct answer is once somebody has gotten the correct answer. Now the fourth tip is another important part of this planning. So look, if you've planned out when you're gonna complete your question bank because you know how many questions you're gonna be doing initially for your first, your second, your third revision or however many revisions you've put aside for yourself, you now need to put up aside time to do mock tests. I would recommend at least, at least doing two mocks. One mock at least a month before the exam and another mock at least one week before the exam. These mocks should be done in ideal testing conditions. So nobody should be disturbing you. You should time yourself and you should really pretend as if you're taking the exam for real. The reason why this is very important is a lot of times international doctors, what ends up happening a damn day is they run out of time. They knew the answers, but they didn't actually plan and structure their time accordingly. So they got to a point where they had 10 or 15 questions left and they just bubbled something randomly. You don't want that happening to yourself. Do not take to heart, you know, what your mock score is. Look at it more as first, your first month revision to what you want to do in terms of your time and then start looking at, okay, should I do more mocks and be better and score better? And your fifth and final tip may be a little biased, but take the road to UK ultimate UCAM Lake QBank as your source of information and knowledge for practicing in this exam. Remember that the QBanks are vital in the sense that it allows you to revise, you can put up flashcards, you can look at the explanations, while well, you can flag what you need to know and what you need to relearn. Yes, you can use other sources of information, such as the Oxford Handbooks or any of your medical textbooks, to clarify your core concepts. But I would not recommend reading those and thinking, just because I've read this, I'll be able to go past the exam. With our QBank, you can go to ukmla.roadtouk.com. That's ukmla.roadtouk.com and check out a demo, see how you feel about it. And if it's something that looks like you would want to get involved in, by all means, get that QBank and use all of the tips that we've talked about today to ensure you do your very best in this exam. Because ultimately, this is your very first step on your road to UK. Completing Plab 1 and then moving on to Plab 2 is what you need to do in order to cinch your GMC registration. So make sure you prepare for it just as well as you prepare for every other exam in your medical career. And God knows this will not be the last exam. So hopefully guys, you found these tips to be useful. I wish you all the very best and good luck for your PLAB exams. Don't stress too much. You've taken a lot of exams just to get to this point. This is just another exam you'll look back fondly on and think, yeah, I managed it because I prepared well and I knew what I had to do to get to this point. As always, please continue to follow us on all of our social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we will see you next time. Bye.